Hey everybody, it's Hot Wheel Day. Don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And I have a confession to make. I am a Hot Wheel snob. That's right. I am, more, of, more specifically, I'm a Sweet 16 snob. I kind of look at all cars outside of the Sweet 16, with the exception of maybe like the, the Twin Mill and the Split Image, and I kind of look at all the other cars outside of there as inferior, and I really have not given them much of a chance in my little snobby attitudes. Um, and I realized I'm kind of missing the boat on a lot of really cool cars. So today we're going to fix my snobbery and we're going to tackle a Roger Dodger. You're not going to want to miss this, so let's get to it. Here I have this Roger Dodger. Now, I'm not a newer redline guy. I'm an older redline guy. I'm a sweet 16 guy, but I have to say I hadn't seen this car before and I'm digging it. I'm really feeling it. This is going to be a fun restoration, so I'm kind of excited about it. Plus, it doesn't hurt matters that I'm a Mopar guy and I'm I'm really really feeling this car. Not quite sure how we're going to do it yet, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, after using my Vic Spitz to drill out the posts, I'll get out a, a little pokey pokey and a little flat bladed screwdriver, and I'm just going to gently persuade this car to come apart. Now the base is plastic, so I need to be extra careful here. I don't want to break the base or something like that, and I sure don't want to ding up the body while I'm doing this. But I've convinced it to separate here. And so now I can go ahead and just lift the base off and take a look at it. Simple enough. Wheels are all right, but I'm probably going to replace them. Nice and shiny. I don't think I'm going to need to do a lot to that. Inside we have our standard little interior and some glass and I've had a bad string of glass lately. I'm glad that this glass looks pretty good. Just a little polishing is going to do the trick. Now I can see that the uh, motor is actually riveted into the body, so I'm going to have to go ahead and drill that out and pop the motor out. So I'll go ahead and break the drill out, and I'll get rid of that rivet. And uh, then I'm just going to kind of reach underneath the engine and just kind of Gently, gently, gently help pop it loose. And there it goes. There's a lot of great detail in this motor. It's going to be a lot of fun to do. All right. It's time for the stripper. Let's get this ugly paint off here. First of all, it's not the best color blue in the world. This is not indicative of Dodge and the great colors that they're cranking out. Uh, and also, what is with those decals? They're just awful. Let's see if I can't make this thing look a little bit better, a little bit more Mopar-like. So here I am just using my gel stripper, and I'm just kind of blotting it all over the place, and I'll let it do the heavy lifting of getting this paint off of here. Okay, after the stripper's had a chance to do its thing, I'll take this under some running cold water, and I'll take a brush to it, and I'll brush off as much of it as I can. Okay, I'm back from the water, and you can see that uh, the paint stripper did a really great job on this car. And there's not a lot uh, of residual here, but if I see anything, I'll hit it up with the uh, dental pick. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the car a quick once-over with the brass bristle brush, just to make sure there's no little crumbs of paint left, and that the uh, finish is fairly smooth and ready for me to move on. Okay, the body is looking pretty amazing right now. Um, if I was going to go ahead and spectra flame this, I'd probably go ahead and throw some zinc on it. But I've decided I am not going to spectra flame finish this car. It's going to get something a little bit different. 
So uh, I really don't need to do anything with zinc or anything like that. Although I'm not going to Spectre Flame paint it. I don't need to have the body a zillion percent perfect like some of the ones that are going to have Spectre Flame. I do want a nice starting surface. And uh, so I'm going to give it one last prep pass using a little 4 steel wool. Go over the entire body, make sure it's all cohesive and smooth and even before I go ahead and start laying down some paint. Okay, I've decided to use Tamiya X15 light green paint because I think it really invokes Mopar and the image you get when you think of Dodge. So I'm going to lay it down using a tack coat, then a couple medium coats, and then a couple nice wet coats. I'll follow that up using Spectra Flame Urethane Clear Coat that I get from the Redline shop. That stuff really is deep and crystal clear. I love it. After that, I'm going to set it aside to dry for about a week. Okay, the body has been drying for what seems like ever. I'm going to use this magic black from the Redline Shops to paint the black vinyl roof onto this car. So a lot of taping later and a little bit of research to make sure I understood how these black vinyl tops looked on this car. And I'm ready to go ahead and lay that down. Here the painting technique is going to be a little bit different as the coats are going to be very, very light and misty. Okay, I don't want to get a nice wet coat or anything like that because I don't want to take away from that flat sort of textured feeling that this paint will give you. Uh, after I lay this paint down, it's going to give it a really nice vinyl top look. Uh, it's it's going to be perfect, but don't go heavy with it. A bunch of light misty coats is better. And don't forget, unmask as soon as you've cleaned out your airbrush. Okay, with the body done put to the side to dry, it's time to work on some of the other parts. Here we're going to bust out your and my favorite gauzy, and we're going to get this windshield a little dip. I've already polished it using my Flitz polish, give it a shine on both sides, and now I'm just going to carefully dip it into the gauzy, set it on my paper plate, cover it so it doesn't gather any dust or crumbs or dirt, and then set it aside to dry. I can't emphasize this enough, whether you're restoring Hot Wheels or building car models or what have you, you need to be treating your clear parts, whether it be with gauzy or pledge floor shine products, uh, whatever the case may be, you really need to be doing this. It makes a world of difference. Okay, so now it's time to turn my attention to the engine, and I'm going to start by hitting it with the brass brush and giving it a good uh, once-over and see in what I end up with and kind of make a decision. I figure I'm already going to have to polish it, so I've got the flits standing by, but I like to always kind of give it a brush down, get rid of any residual gunk or anything like that, and make sure I know what I have. It actually came out looking pretty good, but I want it better. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some uh, flits on here and break up my rotary tool and just kind of buff this sucker up to give it a really good shine. And uh, while working on it and looking at it, I've already decided I'm going to have to do a little detail work on it.
My Fordham rotary tool is going to make quick work of this polishing, but between it and the flips, this thing is going to look like a diamond. Okay, so I'm done with the rotary tool and the flits. I'm going to take a nice soft claw, and I'm going to just put that final polish onto the engine. Make sure I get every little bit of it. It's going to look great. I can't wait to put on some of the detail stuff. So no matter what else you did to it, paint isn't going to want to stick to this because it's got residual flits on it. So I'm going to go ahead now and wash it off with a little isopropyl alcohol to get rid of all the residual polish and make sure that it'll take the paint nicely. All right, I've got a fine tipped brush and a little to me a flat black. And we're going to go ahead and uh, paint inside of the blower. We're going to paint the fan belt and we're going to paint the exhaust tips. Now, I am trying a new camera angle here for you guys. And uh, hopefully, it's going to kind of feel weird, almost like you're looking at it upside down a little bit. But hopefully, you end up liking this new camera angle. Uh, but I really have to have my visor on and have my head kind of in there because, frankly, I'm getting too old to see this shit. So, uh, you know, I can't do anything else about it except try and find you guys a better camera angle. So if, if you think this camera angle is working, make sure you leave some comments in the comment section and let me know what you think. One of the tricks to getting your brush paint to work out nicely is to keep it fairly thinned down, okay? That's why flat paints work better than glossy paints. They're thinner. So I always keep my brush dipped in water so that the paint that's on there is a little bit thin and flows nicely. Okay, the engine is painted dry and we can go ahead and plop it into the car and see how it looks you could certainly just glue the engine back into the car body that would be fine using a little uh a uh, five minute epoxy would work great but in my case I went ahead and I drilled the post of the motor out and I'm going to use one of my little screws and I'm going to screw the engine back into the car body. Okay, so with that done, I think we're about ready to put the whole rest of the car back together. So we're going to start by marrying the glass back to the interior. It's got a couple of alignment pins at the front and the back, so I'm just going to kind of align those, trying to keep my fingers off the window surfaces, because the last thing I want is to have a big old fingerprint in there. All right, I got that together. Motor's in the car. I can flip this over on a clean, soft cloth. And I can go ahead and drop the interior and glass back in. Well, now you're going to get a look at the surprise. Uh, I'm going to marry the bottom back to the top. And you can see I did not go with the original wheels or even replacement wheels. I'm putting aftermarket wheels in here some real Mopar wheels on this sucker. Um, this is the first time I've done something like this, so I'm kind of excited about it, and I can't wait to see how it comes out. 
Uh, I had to make some adjustments to the axle lengths to make sure that that would all fit, but I think it's going to look really, really amazing. So with the base back into place, I can go ahead and drive in a couple screws, put this car back together, and then it's just a little bit of detail work and we can call it done. Okay, so we just need a little bit of paint here. Um, we can wrap this sucker up. Man, I think it is looking pretty amazing. Super excited about this car. And there you have it. One beautiful Roger Dodger. I think it looks amazing. And I'm super, super happy I used the aftermarket wheels here. I think they really just look great. Couldn't be happier with this car. There it is, the Roger Dodger. Ah, oh, man, I'll tell you what, this if nothing was going to fix my Hot Wheels snobbery, this was going to do the trick because this car is badass, okay? I love this thing. I had a lot of fun doing it, and the end result here is amazing. Oh my gosh, especially, I'm a Mopar guy, so this really, man, oh, I just love this thing. What a lot of fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed my restoration custom of the Roger Dodger. If you did, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the ring bell, and you'll get notified anytime I upload a new video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I really do read them, and I love to hear from you guys. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you have the most amazing, super fantabulous day. Go Knights Go! And until next time, be good.